saw your screen. I was like, wait, yours says nine. I looked at my phone. My phone's like, yeah, it's 11. And oh. my computer is six minutes behind. That's amazing. So uh, we're on. Well, Ooh. awesome. Welcome to the .NET Docs for this week. Um, we, we were just commenting that, that uh, Dave's PC is six minutes in the past. So yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's like a relativistic thing or, or what, but uh, he lives in a different time. I do. <laughs> um, you can call me old school. That's what's up. Um, so we're super excited. We have a special guest today, uh, April Spate. Well, and then we lost Dave. Yeah, let's see. Where'd he go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's one of those weeks. One of those weeks. Oh, no. Um, anyway, so we have April Spate. How are you, April? <laughs> I'm doing fine in yourself. Not too bad. Uh, Dave is coming back in. So let's merge him back into the call here. So I just lost everything. That was oh. cool. I think it's because my machine's so old. That's what's up. So it just dropped everything. And uh, that was mid mid conversation. So hopefully Cam picked up where I left off and was inviting uh, April to the stream. I, I so was. I was welcoming April. You can take over. You have you, you know April much better than I do. I think I, I've, I've of course I've seen uh, I've seen you present a couple of times April, but I don't think I've ever actually like sat down and, and spoken with you before. So it's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, well, I know that we don't have much time uh, today with April, so she needs no introduction. She's amazing. Follow her on uh, Twitter, and let's just jump right into it. Um, so you have some things that you want to share with us today, and I'm super interested in all of them. Okay, awesome. So hi, everyone. I'm April. I'm a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft. Prior to that, I was a senior PM on the docs team, helping to bring interactive features to our platform. But now as a cloud advocate, I work on the spatial computing technology team. And so that extends a variety of technologies under extended reality as well, such as augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality. As of late, I've been doing more in the mixed reality and the virtual reality realm. And so what I'm working on at the moment is bringing in uh, Azure Custom Vision with a app that I'm making for HoloLens 2, so that way I can practice my French. So if I back up just a little bit, I've there, there, there's decided... There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. There's a whole <laughs> lot to unpack. That is amazing. Holy cow. Thank you. So I... Um, Oh man, if I even go even further back, I uh, have a thing for languages. And when I was an undergrad for a point in time, I was a linguistics major. And so I, that's, a, that's a scientific study of languages. And when it comes to language, um, I'm one of those people that can still acquire languages late in life because um, technically, as you get older, some people start to lose the ability to acquire new languages. And for and then for others, it's just it just comes easy to learn a new language. And so, um, if you ever find that you're one of those people who struggles learning a new language later in life, um, that doesn't mean that you won't be able to. But uh, there's just other ways you might have to go about doing it. But then there's some of us who can still acquire languages, and that's why they say uh, if you want to introduce uh, a language to like a child, that's like the best time to introduce languages to them because it's easier for them to acquire new languages. So for some of us, that carries on throughout adulthood, and that's me. So here and there, I'll start to try to learn different languages, and as of late, it's been French for me. Uh, at the moment, uh, outside of English, uh, I've learned Spanish, I've learned Mandarin as well, and uh, I started learning French a while ago, and then I stopped because life got busy. But as of late, and just given where we are with things, I decided to pick up another language. And so I've been learning French. And trying to bring the best of both worlds together, technology and French, I decided to create this app with my HoloLens, whereas with Custom Vision, I can look at an object around me and then see the, um, what that image is, the label for it, in French. And so... I got the idea based off of a tutorial, older tutorial that we have on docs 
that just shows you how to use custom vision. And I figured I'd give it a try. So if you haven't had a chance to check out custom vision uh, yet within our Azure product products, I would say take a look at it. We have an entire um, uh, UI built up around it so that way you can train your models without having to get too deep in the weeds with a lot of different like tech jargon and so on and so forth. And it's really easy to use. But what I'll show today is what I have so far. Um, let me share what I have on my screen. Can I, Can you all see my screen? Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. awesome. So this is what the uh, the custom vision custom vision portal, if you will, looks like. And it's, again, it's based off a tutorial that we have currently. But what you need to do essentially is upload a series of images to it and then assign tags. And so in this case, I have 10 different pictures of a mouse and then 10 different pictures of a keyboard. And what you wanna do is make sure that you have different variations of whatever those objects are. And so in this case, I didn't find these pictures. These actually came with the tutorial that I was following. But what you would want to do is just find a variety of different images of a mouse and then, in this case, of a keyboard. Now, what I did to get the French part of it is when you upload those images, you can assign tags. And so in my, in my case, um, for the, the keyboard, that's a clavier, I have that tag for that. And then for the mouse, for the souris, I have that tag. So once so you upload, go ahead. I was just going to ask a question. So about mm -hmm. the, the clavier and the, what was the other one? Sorry. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, is, is there a way to actually have HoloLens, like, does it have like speakers to where if you were to like maybe click on it once you see it, if it recognized it, it could actually speak that translation for you? That's what I'm hoping to add onto it now, because right now um, what it's able to do, and I recorded a video to share with you in a moment, what it's mm -hmm. able to do is take a picture of it, and okay. then with that image, it sends it to um, through Azure to the cloud, and it takes it to this predictions tab, which I'll show you in a second, and then it will show you the uh, the probability of what it guesses what it is, and then what it should do from there is back in the Hololens actually put a label to it, and oh, so wow. what I am hoping is that um, the label part is still working on. But once I get that part um, worked out, then I'm hoping to be able to have um, speech embedded into it so that way it can speak what it is. That's so awesome. uh, so yeah, it's pretty cool. And so as I mentioned, uh, if you are in the device, I have a quick little video to show you what it does. One second. Now, as I mentioned, I'm still working out some kinks with this and I recorded this video that I'm gonna share with you um, on the device. But uh, there shouldn't be any audio. Let me actually turn down the audio that they did pick up. But right now I do have a bug with it, whereas it is recognizing the object, but it's currently not displaying the label on it. And so um, one of the guys with the mixed reality team is helping me out with that. So once that's good to go, then I'll be able to keep going with it. But just to show you this video, this is from the HoloLens. And once it starts, I actually That's pick up a so key. Cool. And you see kind of like the little white letters, it says camera status ready in like a little like dot mm -hmm. there. So that little finger gesture yeah. I'm doing, when you do the tap motion, which is what I have it set to now, um, let me pause it here, mm -hmm. which is what I have it set to now, that takes the picture. And then once that picture is taken, it sends it into the cloud and to Azure. Um, that little developer development console over here is uh, that bug <laughs> that I'm currently experiencing. So we're working through that part. Oh, that's but so cool. The part that is working, however, is when things go to the cloud. So here in the predictions, all those images that I take, they upload here. And so once they're here, what you can do, I think these are the ones I did with what you saw, it'll show you the predictions for it. And so in this case, it predicted that this object was a clavier and that was 100% of um, how it predicted it. And I did some with the mouse, like this one was, um, was at 99.9%. .9%. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. This one has a mouse and a keyboard. So this one happens to just pick up the keyboard and probably because it's much bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, we can actually make some of these even bigger. So like this one, for example, was a mouse. <laughs> and it guessed it uh, correct that it's a mouse. And That's so cool. as... As you are using the custom uh, AI portal, you can add more tags to the objects that it's detecting as well. And make sure that you are just training your models every time you are making changes. And so what's even more cool with this is that the app has two different modes. One is in analysis mode and the other is in training. So what I showed you in the demo was analysis mode, whereas it can take the picture and it should display a label of what it is. However, you can also continue to train by switching to training mode. And when you're in training mode, it takes pictures of um, the different objects that you see. And then using the microphone with your HoloLens, you can say what that object is, and then it'll sign that tag to the object. Oh, wow, that's so cool. So yeah, so it's, Something that, um, make that bigger again. It's just a little passion project that I am working on, but more important, being able to incorporate what I personally love, which is communication and just languages in general with, um, with just other forms of technology. And I want to say in maybe three weeks, I'll be uh, streaming how to actually set this up um, with a, um, with a mixed reality device. So I would say definitely for those who are watching, even you all, if you're interested in seeing how I set this up, definitely tune in for that. And I think it's in about three weeks, but so, so, yeah. So so we have, we have a lot, we have several MR and VR devices around our house. My kids are huge VR gamers. Um, but for our viewers, I'm wondering if you could take just a moment and back up because I've, I've heard you. I've heard you throw a couple of terms around. Um, you, you've mentioned, I think, uh, you know, mixed reality and and uh, I think augmented reality at one point. And what what mm -hmm. are the? Can you can you briefly explain the differences in those terms? And and like is is you you mentioned that you were going to show people how to do this in mixed reality. Is that when, when you yeah. say that is that a different implementation than what you've done with the Hololens, or is that is that the same thing? So that's the same thing. So augmented reality is when uh, typically, I typically tend to do things with augmented reality. If you start with AR um, on my phone, for example, and it's being able to put digital objects into the real world. And so you can think of things such as like Pokemon Go, for example, whereas if you're looking at, um, if you're looking on your phone and you can see the Pokemon around you, that would be an example of augmented reality. The same for different retailers nowadays who have the ability on their site to actually place different furniture pieces in your home and just see what it looks like. You can scale it, you can move it around and place it in different parts. That's going to be augmented reality. Mixed reality is, um, it's going to be a mix between that augmented but you're also able to actually have um, your objects, and this is more so diving into spatial, which is primarily what our team focuses on, is when you're able to also interact um, with those objects and those objects interact with what's happening in your environment. So as an example, let's say um, that I made a, 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 a virtual ball for example. So in the, in like the real world, if I were to take that ball and if I were to sit it um, on the edge of like my computer desk, essentially that ball should probably fall because it's on the edge of the desk. And then it should probably also roll because it's a ball and it's round. Mm -hmm. Now you can do that. Um, especially if you're, if you're, if you're diving into the area that I am more so focused on with, um, with, uh, with spatial, and you can do that with like a HoloLens, for example, whereas I can take objects and place them, um, virtual objects onto like my physical real life objects. And then assuming that I program everything correctly and set things up correctly, um, they should be able to actually behave the way you would expect those objects to behave. It's similar to how uh, some people have different apps, whereas when you're looking at the app, it kind of places it on top of your physical environment. 
kind of like, I'm trying to think of a good way to say this, because I know my manager described it pretty well when he was saying, like, just adding, like, Willy Wonka theme to, like, his home. It's kind of like, almost like in that sense, it's like you're adding, like, a skin on top of, like, your real world. But right. the real world's still there. You can see it. Now, with virtual reality, um, which I've been getting into a bit more lately, you're completely immersed in the virtual world. So you don't see anything in the physical world at all. And with those devices, um, once you're in there, um, it, it can feel very real, I would say. And um, I've just been getting into that more recently. A really good example for that, I know here in LA, we have Dreamscape and they have experiences where like you're fully immersed in these different stories and you can like go on all these adventures. But what's really cool is that you're not in a really big space. And once you put on the device, it feels like you can go as like as far as the eye can see. Because Most of the, uh, I was going to say, those are the best ones to watch, right? Yeah. Because it, if you watch those people that are completely immersed like that, they all run into walls and stuff. Yep. And it's really entertaining. <laughs> yes, and I, I have ran into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, so, like, recently, um, I just got my Oculus Quest, and I, had, I wanted to try out Richie's Plank, which I would definitely suggest trying out if, um, if you have a VR device and if you're okay with heights. But it gives you this sense that you're on this plank and that you're walking off of this building on this plank. Oh, my gosh. And um, I would also say, like, check out the YouTube videos for it, too, for the reactions. But when I tried it out, um, I was trying in my living room, and... I was starting to walk off the plank and I didn't realize I was walking right into like my living room wall. <laughs> and, and what's even better is that I was actually recording a reaction video of myself. So of course I have it on video. <laughs> so <at some> point, <laughs> You'll have to share that with us. That'd yeah. Be great. At so, some point I'll, I'll have to share it with you, with you too. But I, I, um, I have a moment like have that. I, it wasn't it wasn't like the the MR type stuff, but just like one of my first experiences in VR um, was was with um, I, I have a, a PSVR rig. One of my first experiences was I was trying out the um, they they did you know how they do some of these stupid little like one off uh, mini games to coincide with like movie releases or stuff, and they had done one for um, Spider Man Homecoming right mm -hmm. and and in this in this little vr experience thing you are on top of this this construction crane above new york and <laughs> and and i i like my first impulse when i'm standing on top of this crane and i'm looking down is to get down on my knees right because you all of a yeah. sudden feel off balance yeah it's nuts it's, it's crazy it's That's it's awesome. crazy just how how real things feel like when we did dreamscape um here there's a part where you're kind of on this little like cart and it's kind of like a roller coaster and you actually like duck because you think that it's real and that's how real these things feel and i will say you know, there's there's some good and then there's some bad to it. And I think it really depends on how sensitive you are to what's happening around you. Because um, when I went to MIT Reality Hack earlier this year, um, Microsoft was a sponsor as well. And while like while we were there, I tried out an experience. Um, I forgot what game it was, but all I remember was I put the device on, started the game, it was walking through a tutorial and like the characters in the game. And all I remember seeing was like this huge character, like this huge, huge dude, like a monster. And I remember it saying something to the effect that they could like pop out of nowhere. And I was like, mm -mm, nope, I don't want that. <laughs> So so I, I I I bought Resident Evil Seven for PS oh, VR no. the day it came out, Ooh. and I played it for about fifteen minutes, and then noped out, and have never played it again. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, like um, I, like I won't ruin it, and I have video. Um, but with Richie's Plank, there is a um, it's not called like a scary mode, but it's like a scary mode, and. All I remember is like all this crazy stuff was happening. Well, I'll ruin it, sorry. But for one second, there's like this big like tarantula walking towards you. Mm -hmm. 
and you don't see it at first. It kind of comes out of nowhere. Then it starts to chase you. And then the like elevator door closes. And then once you're like high up on the plank, um, you fall off of it, which is normal in the game. But then it takes you to this other world. And in the midst of it, you get this like kind of creepy clown laugh happening. And then everything goes black. And then some lights start to flicker and come on. And all you see far away is this zombie looking guy. And the lights are like coming on and off, on and off. He's walking towards you. And I also had that recorded too. And I was like, nope. <laughs> I took it off after that. But it's, but in, in more wholesome, you know, news, there are fun, fun, enjoyable things. I know with the quest, there was an experience on there. Someone recorded a video of like puppies. And so it really feels like you're playing with the puppies because the camera is set at like puppy level and it's cute, you Aww. know? So, so you, I know, was you thinking, have some good and bad. <laughs> so so uh, go ahead, Dave. Well, I was going to say, I was thinking more about the project that you have. And there's like a, a, a pretty legit use case for like companies right so if i was thinking about rosetta stone specifically and like the learning a new language mm -hmm. and with custom vision you know you can train different sets of um you know models towards different um things to recognize and then potentially you know use speech synthesis to kind of have an mm -hmm. utterance where it says what it is um so i'm i was envisioning a company like that kind of taking this technology and running with it and then having different levels, right? So you can say the model, this model is like basic things and then, then it gets more advanced. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you're actually, you know, kind of not fully immersed, but like if you're using mixed reality, you could be walking around mm -hmm. and you could be recognizing things and then like just learning a language as yeah. you just progress through your day. And that could be so cool. Yeah. And I, and I think that is cool. And even if you take it a step further, um, I know, uh, and I, I've seen demos of this happening um, with, with our own products, whereas you can take what someone is saying and then translate that into whatever, whatever language. And I've actually done that as well with HoloLens. But like, if you could imagine like a mega app that had all of that built into it, like it's really good for language learning. And um, like I said, I try, I try that out too with HoloLens and it, it, it works pretty well, I would say. But yeah, from a use case perspective, um, you you could do a lot. You could do a lot with it. I would say. Now, now with the 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 app that you've cooked up here, I have, mm -hmm. first of all, is are you going to open source it? Is it open sourced? Yeah, once I work through this bug <laughs> that I currently have, um, it will. Um, I anything that I just personally make, um, I I end up just sharing on my GitHub. But as of late, now that I'm working with the um, with the cloud advocacy team at Microsoft, I'm starting to ramp up on content within um, really anything spatial. So once I work through this bug, I do plan to go ahead um, and and share it in that manner. And then from there, anyone can can take it and run with it. Uh, my goal is to expose really anyone to this technology and show you how to use it, and then how you can also um, uh, incorporate that into whatever that you're building. So I would say once once it's up, take it and run with it. <laughs> so so from from my own perspective, so thinking selfishly here, uh, what what hardware will I need to run it? Because I've got I've got like a couple of Windows MR headsets around the house. Uh, is, is, can I yeah. can I use that, or does it have to be a Hololens? Or you could use that. Um, and in addition to that, if you happen to be a person who just does not have a device at all, I, if I remember correctly. For this one, you can still try it out in um, in, in Unity. Um, that's what I use to, 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 to build anything, really. Uh, the only thing is that your, your, uh, your computer needs a camera because it needs to be able to capture images of, um, of whatever the object uh, happens to be. If you are using, um, I know with the Windows Mixed Reality devices, if I'm not mistaken, I think there was a blurb in the original tutorial I followed that said that a camera needs to be attached. But essentially, you need a camera to like capture the photo. Right. So beyond that, whatever uh, whatever device um, you're using, you just need to have a camera attached to it. And then um, it also just needs to be able to um, to uh, be connected to the internet because you need to be able to send the, the images um, to... Uh, to uh, in, to the cloud, so that way you can get your predictions back. Well, I I, I 
definitely plan on forking this repo when you when you get it up there. Oh, I, yeah. I, will be, I will be playing with it. And and uh, je parle petit français, un petit. So you know, maybe I can pick up some more. Yes. Oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I'm 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 learning. I I'm using Duolingo. And yesterday it said I've learned like 200 words so far. So oh, I'm proud. Awesome. <laughs> I'm proud of that little accomplishment. But um, I, I, I figured we might as well make learning fun. You know, go beyond just the, the, the language learning app and just try to add these things to all the different, um, the different tech that we have at, you know, at our hands. And um, I'm interested to see what others, you know, build off of it as well. The irony to all of this is um, I didn't realize that you were working with the, with the speech stuff, and that's actually what I write for in Cognitive Services. Oh. It's a, so I'm literally writing articles about speech recognition, speech translation, and yeah. speech synthesis. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh. so it's it's fun. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I, I love it. Um, had I never gone into tech, and I was in fashion before I came into tech, but while I was an undergrad, I, like I said, I was doing linguistics, and I love just language in general. I really do. And um, for a while, I was working with uh, chatbots and AI assistants before I transitioned over into spatial, and I felt like like that was my home for like a while. But Python was my home, and now I, I've since moved on over to C Sharp, which is uh, a whole other monster. <laughs> are, are, are you one of these folks who, who just like any technology you pick up, you just like get immersed in it and become an expert in it, and then you're like, ah, I'm bored, time to move on to the next thing? Expert, I will say, um, I, I would use that term very loosely, but <laughs> everything else that you said, though, um, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people, and, and I've, I've been like that with probably everything since um, since since I was a child. Once I'm interested in something, um, I like give it my all and then it's like, all right, what's next? And so, uh, you know, I would say for me, it's kept me more well-rounded when it's come to, uh, to just trying new things out. But there are certain things where I do try to, I guess, specialize in a sense a bit more. And so for one, for me, for a while, that was conversational design with chatbots and AI assistants and just the best way to design those. But now that I work in, um, over in extended reality, I'm still trying to find what my thing is that I really want to uh, focus on and specialize in. And... Uh, I don't know quite what it is yet. I, I've kind of been had my hands in a little bit of everything, so so we'll see what which area I decide to focus on um, most. But right now, I think it might be VR. If anything, I just it's think really VR is cool. I was just gonna yeah. say, like, you could take that conversational, you know, bot. Um, knowledge and apply it to like the mm -hmm. hololens for example right you could have like an interactive yeah. voice bot that you could chat with then and yeah maybe even like have like an avatar or something that follows you around and yep. not a zombie though because that'd be terrifying yeah that would be terrifying <laughs> i i do have a friend that had an idea for a project without going too much in depth about what the project was but have either of you seen donnie darko oh yes Oh, yeah. So you know the the bunny guy. Mm -hmm. um, he had thought about doing like something almost similar, where it's like kind of like following you around, kind of almost like how the oh. Sims. They did their own version of it with like the the social bunny. Like whenever your Sim became like super sad, that social bunny appeared, and it was like similar to like Donnie Darko, except oh. for the, the Sims one wasn't as creepy. Right. But doing something like that that like follows you around and you can communicate with. And so um, that's been also on my mind is doing something like that. Uh, so. you, using existential terror to drive productivity. <laughs> that's what you need to do. That's what I need to do. That's exactly what I need to do. But yeah, there's, um, there, that, that's one thing I would also say I like about um, working in extended reality compared to some of the other areas of tech that I've been in is that the other areas, and when I say other areas, I mean like Python, for example, where for, one, for a while I was just doing anything Python, but then even when I got into bots, those areas are a bit more fleshed out and people pretty much more or less know the capabilities of that. 
Whereas over in extended reality, there's still so much that everyone's learning. So that's what I really like about that is, yes, there are people who have been doing this for 20 or so years back when, you know, this field wasn't as popular. But even now that things are ramping up, people are still learning all the capabilities every single day. And that makes me happy because there's not like any one person that knows everything. Everyone's still learning what they can do. And there's just so many possibilities. And that's what I really like about it is just that you never know what's going to happen next with this um, with this technology. So I I can say I'll 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 be sticking with this one for a while. Well, and that's I, that's good because we're going to have to have you come back and talk some more. I know you, <laughs> I know you have another another um, obligation that you have to get off to uh, right about now. Yeah. So, um, if, if and I, I think we're we're actually keeping you beyond time. So um, yeah yeah. I, I certainly thank you for coming by, April, and we will most certainly have you again. This was amazing, and I want to hear all about it. I, I, I think I, I would just like to, like, I mean, clearly uh, we can't do it right now, but I can't, I'd like to be like a little camera in your office and just, like, watch what you do because <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. I will say, I guess one last thing I can show you if I can, like, move. Over here, if I, like, lower the camera, these last two, these last two shelves here, they're my like uh, my extended reality shelves because I have cool. four different devices there, and oh. so I switch between them. I dropped my my ring light, sorry, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I switch between Hololens the first one, and then Hololens two, and then I have a Magic Leap one, and um, and then the Oculus Quest. And I would honestly say all four devices are like so different, and so I try to. Ideally, in a perfect world, I would be able to do one project on one and then try to do it with the others. I haven't made it that far yet because they're just so different in terms of how you set things up. But hopefully one day, you know. But yeah, that's my little extended reality shelves. That's awesome. <laughs> that's so cool. But yeah, but definitely um, I'll keep you all posted on how things are going. And hopefully next time around, I'll have a bit more to demo um, as well. And maybe I'll also be able to get something set up with the emulator so that way I can have the device on and you can see it in real time. Oh, would be, that'd be really cool. That so. would be awesome. We could watch your reaction to a zombie attack. No. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes, yes. But, awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks again. Oh, no problem. You both take care and everyone that's watching, you all take care as well. All right. Thanks. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.